Sue, Lee, it's great to see you. Congratulations on the closing of the deal. Um, tell me, if you will, Sue, what does GameSys bring to the table that Bally's sure. didn't have? It's a leading uh, UK operator. Um, uh, it's actually uh, a top five operator in the UK. Um, and the only one of top 10 that leads without sports. So uh, it's actually iGaming and bingo led. Um, actually generates uh, incredible margins. It's the highest margins of that group, of the peer group. And frankly, traded at a very reasonable multiple. So it's a more mature business and so it did not trade at these huge valuations as some of the online gaming companies do here in the U.S. So Lee, you're coming on. You, you're now the CEO of this combined company, Bally's. Where are you seeing opportunities to bring GameSys know-how to Bally's? So I think one of the things that appealed to us when we first looked at the deal was the amazing combination and nothing's going in the bin here. So Bally's had sports, we didn't have the sports side, they obviously have the retail footprint, the market access. From our side we bring a huge tech stack, sustainable at scale, and we bring a lot of the algorithms and, and the, the know-how of how we use our data online to drive growth. You also are looking at fantasy sports with this acquisition of Monkey Knife Fight, which is not new, but it sort of fits into this omni-channel platform. What's next? Well, I think that uh, really there's almost unlimited growth is really all different ways to engage customers, even without gaming but um, um, with uh, engagement, uh, audience engagement. Because really, if you think about what sports viewing is currently, it's a very lean back experience, right? Which is really what separates sports, um, traditional sports viewing versus, you know, if you go to a stadium or arena, it's very much like particip participatory, yeah. right? You get to express your opinion all the time. And also, if you look at, you know, esports and online, like live media, like you know, TikTok Live, people are just writing chat and expressing themselves all the time. There are so many ways that we can bring that kind of audience engagement to actual live sports and um, that have nothing to do with gaming. Gaming is just the end point, you know, where we can offer chat. But you're coming to this a lot later than some of your bigger competitors. How do you go about, Lee, attacking the interactive part of this? Oh, we don't mind that. We don't mind, we don't think we're late necessarily. I think that we have, uh, we have a different approach to try and get into this game. And it's not spending $200 million a quarter on above the line advertising. If you look at where we put our chips, it's mostly, it's on those media partnerships, it's on the investment in our technology. And I think we'll approach customer acquisition in a very different way, really driving omnichannel. You know, we're going to be the first gaming company in the US that's going to be equally online revenues with retail revenues, right? That changes the mindset, I think, within the company and makes us really aligned in terms of driving that omnichannel future.